Uh, so yeah, we've got front logics, PSI, which is a process state indicator, hollow projectors, which is what the layer would be beamed out of in 3D, instead we've got a flashing LED. We would have a magic panel in there, which can glow red. There's an, a rear PSI. Mine on the back is not R2-D2 co uh, colours, so I've done custom colours. This is the rear logic, rear PSI. Dome bumps will eventually control the colour of the rear and allow combinations to be uh, input to free up different functions on the droid. In here we've got the battery drawn plug and then I can show you the inside of the droid or the dome rather. So there's the front logics, there's the front PSI, we've got servos attached to the HP, servos attached to each of the doors So we've got nine doors, three HPs. We can see this is the top one, uh, anti-twist, kind of child-proof mechanisms to make sure that uh, the kids can't twist the wires and pull it all to pieces. Uh, we've got uh, an Arduino on the back of here, which controls uh, an I Adafruit I2C servo controller. Those uh, servos are controlled by relays. So when the servo is not moving, it's not powered, so it can be moved by hand, and the kids can then open the doors and not do any damage. That's the back of the rear logics, and that's the Arduino microprocessor that runs the rear logics, those, and both PSIs. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the interior of the dome. Uh, which way is that? There. I won't bother putting the battery back on for now. Um, controller. Controller is a PS2 controller. I use these control freaks which are for cheating at, at online gaming. Uh, it gives you, if you imagine you've got 19 mil of travel on a standard stick, by putting it up 10 mil you get like 36 mil of travel. Mm -hmm. So it actually makes it, a, you know, when you're driving around a lot more sensitive and especially driving around kids and stuff that's really really useful. Uh, I apply accelerations to my motors anyway, so it's not twitchy. It doesn't, a lot of the RC gear is really twitchy and difficult to drive. This is yeah, really, really simple. And in fact, I do hand it over to four and five year olds at events for them to drive. But we've just got uh, public liability insurance, so we won't be able to do that anymore. Um, so yeah, PS2 controller talks to a microprocessor in the box. That outputs certain information to the screen, so I get feedback from the droid as to what's going on, what's on and what's off. Uh, and whether it's it's running a command, um, little USB battery, sorry, USB battery pack powers it all, and that communicates wirelessly using XB to this little wireless unit on the droid, and that then communicates with lots of other microprocessors in and around the droid. There are seven in R2 at the moment. It'll probably end up being about twelve by the time I'm done. Uh, it's getting more and more complex with every addition, but. They're all sort of standalone units, so you can test them all on the bench, get them all working, plug them in, and you know they're going to work with everything else. So it's uh, actually quite nice and straightforward, really, but it looks a, a real bird's mess once you're in there. Um, batteries. Um, batteries, I can show you. There are two types in R2 at the moment. One is 5 volt lithium polymer. Uh, travel battery so if you were going camping you could plug your smartphone into here and charge it up quite happily uh, that is a 30 amp hour 5 volt costs about 20 quid and will last all weekend on, on R2 no problem at all so that runs the low current 5 volt stuff we've then got a 12 volt battery this one is a golf trolley battery 24 amp hour 12 volt 2.9 kilo uh, that would normally be something along those si lines, a uh, truck battery or similar to get 24 amp power, but this is a really neat light solution. Unfortunately, um, life by four and costs an absolute fortune. Uh, we then have another one of these in the dome, so I've got two 5 volt supplies and one 12 volt. The 12 volt is passed from top to bottom via this thing called a slip ring that allows it to turn. 
the top here I've got a potentiometer which allows the position of the dome to be known by the body so I can tell that Arthur at any time to face forward or to do a head shake or to spin his head one, uh, you know, a full turn um, you know, lots of control and it's, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice little setup really uh, 232 is these actuators here. The 232 is the two leg to three leg conversion, as I keep saying. Uh, the actuators drive these arms. If I turn this a little bit, I'll see better. These arms push this central plate, which is on a bearing, and as that turns, that these stay with the body, and this moves with the leg. Connected to here off a little uh, foot is a bar going to the ankle and that keeps the ankle locked in so for example there it's all solid and this end is all solid so that that allows him to stand in two leg mode otherwise he'd just be free to fall over when he went back to three legs it's taken five or six years to get to this stage um, it's a very fun hobby and I'd recommend it to anyone you don't have to go crazy like I have, you can just make a, a really control fun thing and just add to it as you go. But I got to the fun stage and just kept on adding. And that is Artie really.